Janice Straight Nose walks hand in hand with her 11 year old granddaughters in hopes of sending a message. To empower them too, to let them know to say no and not feel the peer pressure of drugs and alcohol in our community. No more burying our, our loved ones, our young people. Cody, Key and Kisiku's First Nation members say drugs and alcohol continue to plague the area. They're desperate for help, so they rally to address what they say is a crisis. We all want a better homeland for our people. The 51-year-old Kisiku's First Nation member has felt the effects of those issues firsthand. I have a daughter who's entrenched. I lost a sister, my little baby sister, and her common-law partner. It's a story that resonates with many. A state of emergency was declared for all three reserves back in March after a string of drug-related deaths, but the issues still remain. I'm tired of people dying. Tired of people hurting. Jacqueline Brass was one of the organizers of the rally. She wanted to share her story of violence and addiction with other concerned community members. A couple of times, I could have been a murdered, missing Indian woman, just the same as any other woman. While Brass survived, many others from the area have not. We're losing our young people, our youth at an alarming rate. Elder Elro Severite has lived here for 62 years. She has witnessed what she says is the evolution of destruction. I noticed in the 90s, it kind of got to where uh, people started to use cocaine and started bringing it in the communities. There are no clear solutions on the horizon, but Severite says bringing back the language and traditional ceremonies will help solve some of the issues ailing the community. There's no police here. There's no laws to protect us. There's no constitution. There's just like wakes. That's all we see is wakes. There's kids walking around here, you know, and there's violence going on, you know, it's not teaching them anything. You see them walking around and there's needles on the ground. There's people fighting over there and they, they think that's normal. That is not normal. Getting life back to normal may be a long road, but it's one these communities are willing to walk. Everybody is affected by this one way or another. The community also plans to make this walk an annual event starting next spring. For Indigenous Circle, I'm Ashley Fields on the Cody First Nation.